Welcome back to 65 Drums, my name's Justin. So to be honest, I wasn't really expecting to review a set of low volume cymbals and modified one ply mesh heads from Evans, but uh, here it is. Now starting with the snare drum, this is a completely unique sort of mesh head combo that I've never seen anyone else do. So you've got a one ply mesh head they've been making for a very long time. They've taken that and they combined it with a Mylar acoustic resonant head that have a bunch of slits cut through the bottom of it. It creates this snapping sound. I feel like it sounds and feels better the more you tune it up. I played it at lower tensions on a wooden 5.5 inch snare. And then when I put it on a, like a, a piccolo snare at much higher tension, I ended up liking it a whole lot more. Although I do want to mention that there's this weird sort of like overtone from the bottom resonant head right underneath the mesh that does slightly become a little bit annoying if you tune it up very, very high. So you might have to find like a sweet spot to get the feel that you want without the annoying sort of ringing overtone. And if you really want to sell the effect, you can have an acoustic resonant head on the very bottom of the shell along with a snare wire that's turned on. So overall, it's definitely a massive improvement over their regular 14 inch snare drum mesh heads that they were making before. Because of that bottom layer, it makes it sound better and gives it a little bit more of an enhanced feel. I feel like they could have pushed it even farther though and gone two ply with these drum heads to just make the drums feel a little bit heavier and also giving it that extra edge of durability. Now moving over to the mesh heads for the toms, it's got the exact same bass playing material. It's a thin one ply mesh head from Evans, but they modified it in different ways. So on the surface, there's a little patch that goes in the center of the drum. This gives it a little bit more of a heavy feel and also increases durability. Because with one ply mesh heads, it doesn't have as many layers of material as two or three plies, and so that cuts down on the lifespan a little bit. So having a patch in the center, assuming that you have the accuracy to play there, it makes these drum heads last a little bit longer. But the real big difference is that underneath the drum head, you have a bunch of pieces of foam that go in a circle around the center. Basically, when you're playing on this versus a regular Evans one ply mesh head or a Remo silent stroke, it's got more weights to it and it bounces less. Now, to be honest, I was really surprised at how effective this combination of the patch on top and the foam underneath was to making it feel heavier and have less bounce to it. So this is definitely a large improvement over the regular one ply mesh heads from Evans that they were previously making. And then moving over to the kick drum, this is probably my favorite out of the whole bunch. It's using way more foam. It's got this giant donut on the back of it. And then on the front, it has this massive kick drum patch with a carbon fiber sort of pattern on it. Because of that really large surface area of the center patch being essentially a piece of plastic, it felt like I was playing on a plastic drum head. It just had a little bit more give than a regular plastic drum head could get because it you know, has that stretch that mesh has. This was the most effective out of all of them in feeling acoustic-like in my opinion. It's, of course, it's not exactly like a regular acoustic drum head, but it gets close enough, I think, for most people out there. And because it has the kick drum patch already on it, you can use felt kick drum beaters, which you can't get away with on regular mesh heads unless you have a kick drum patch. Using triggers with these can be slightly challenging. You have to keep some things in mind. We'll talk about that in a little bit in a later part of the video. Taken as a whole, I think the drum heads are definitely a massive improvement over regular thin one ply mesh heads that Evans was making before. And I would take these in a heartbeat over the Remo silent strokes if I was just going for like a practice, no electronic sort of setup. My only thing is that I feel like they could be improved even more if they were two ply. That would give it even more of a thicker feel to it and it would help increase durability even that much farther. But overall, this package is very good for what they're charging and for what they are. The symbol sizes in the package that I have are 20 inches for the ride, Crash 1 is 18, Crash 2 is 16, and the hi-hats are 14 inches across. I think that's a good set of sizes for low volume symbols. I don't really uh, like having very small low volume symbols because they're missing all kinds of material from all those gaps in the symbols. That makes them flex a lot, and that also makes them sway really crazy when you play on them. 
So having the larger sizes helps them feel a little bit more realistic to me. My favorite out of the bunch is probably the hi-hats because they have some nice definition on them. They're not too flexible. They sound decent when you play on the top and they don't sound like absolute garbage when you play with them, you know, crashing into them half open. The ride symbol is pretty decent. 20 inches across, I like that size. I also like playing on the bow area. It's got some nice bright stick definition to it. And when I play on the bell, it actually makes a bell sound. But while the Evan symbol sounds decent when I play on the bell, it's almost as if the bell isn't there because there's no like, like it doesn't look like a bell's there. It's almost flat. Now, as far as the overall volume of these symbols, they're definitely regular low volume symbols. But I do think the Zildjian L80s are a little bit quieter. Either they're quieter or I'm being tricked because there's a whole lot less high frequencies on the Zildjian L80s. They're very dull sounding. They just don't really stand out that much compared to these Evan symbols, which are very, very bright and in your face. I personally prefer a more dull, less in your face sound to my low volume cymbals. So I'm leaning more towards uh, the Zildjian L80s, but it's gonna be up to you and what you want your cymbals to sound like. It's 300 bucks for the cymbal pack that I personally have. Uh, that sounds like a lot, but when you compare it against uh, the Sabian Quiet Tones, which I think sound very similar to them, or at least in the similar ballpark, that's $454. So it's 150 bucks less. And if you compare it against uh, the Zildjian counterpart, it comes with one less crash symbol and costs $400. And the ride symbol on the Zildjian is 18 inches, I believe, versus 20 inches on these Evans. Now, believe me, Evans would have tried to price their stuff at 400 bucks for the symbol pack if they could have gotten away with it, but they don't have the clout in the symbol market that Sabian and Zildjian have, so they had to undercut them a little bit. But they didn't go so low that they were sort of fighting against all the stuff from China on AliExpress and Amazon. You can buy symbols that look very similar to this for around $150 or $100. Now, I don't know if they're any better or any worse. I just want to make you aware of the options out there because this is a review. Meanwhile, if you buy a whole package of all the drum heads and all the symbols together, that is $424. If you're trying to look up competition for that sort of pricing, uh, there's something on Sweetwater where they'll give you a set of Zildjian L80s and Remo Silent Strokes for $400. But in that case, they're giving you one less crash. So while this Evans pack does cost like 24 bucks more or whatever it was, you're actually getting an extra crash symbol. Okay, so overall as a practice package, I feel like Evans has something pretty good here. Putting aside the electronic stuff, which we're gonna talk about in a second, it does stand out. It is different than just buying a set of Zildjian L80s with Remo Silent Strokes. Because these mesh heads, while they are one ply, they don't really feel and sound like regular one ply mesh heads because of the modifications. This is good. It pleasantly surprised me and I enjoyed playing on them. Okay, so now let's switch gears and talk about using triggers with these electronic drums. Starting with the cymbals, you can follow this tutorial, which I'll link in the description below, that shows you how to take low volume cymbals and turn them electronic. But if that's your goal all along, I wouldn't really buy these to begin with because you'd probably want to start with a very, very cheap low volume cymbal because you have to dampen it very, very heavily, which cuts out the tone. So you might as well not get a slightly nicer low volume cymbal that sounds good because you're not going to hear it anyway. And then you're gonna to have to buy all these triggers from like Go e Drum or whoever you end up going with. Uh, overall, I feel like I recommend just buying pre-converted low volume cymbals because it saves you hassle and you don't have to go through all that work yourself. If you live in the United States, Pintech makes some pre-converted low volume cymbals. If you live in Europe, maybe check out Jubeki because they have their own line as well, which I've tried and I like. Just be aware that you'll only get the feel of the low volume cymbals. You won't get the cool tone of a low volume cymbal because they have that elastic band that goes around to dampen the overall vibrations to get better triggering. Now switching over to the drum heads, I did use the regular triggers that I already had inside of my drums. One thing to mention though is that on the kick drum, it's got that massive foam donut that's decently thick and it didn't really fit with the triggers I already had pre-installed from Extreme Drums on the inside of my drums. So what I had to do was lower the triggers down to compensate for the foam that was sticking out underneath of that drum head. Basically, I had the foam area of the trigger sitting on the foam that was dampening the drum head. That's not really ideal, so if you're gonna go this route, maybe go with a clip-on trigger on the outside of the drum, 
or maybe go with a center mounted internal design that sort of bypasses getting in the way of that foam underneath of the drum head. Now moving over to the toms, I didn't really have to modify anything. I left the internal triggers I already had there from convertible percussions and UFO drums and they worked fine. That's because they were center mounted and they didn't come in contact with the foam pieces so I didn't have to adjust them up or down. But even if you used a side mounted internal design, I don't really feel like it would get in contact with the, with the foam pieces because it doesn't really, they're not really as wide as what's on the kick drum head. Now moving over to the snare drum, I don't know if I would love using an internal trigger with that long term. Now technically nothing bad happened, but I just feel like over time those pieces of plastic will move around. They might rub against that piece of foam and possibly damage it over a long period of time. But of course I haven't tried that. It's just something that's floating around in my mind. So in that case, maybe get a clip on external trigger like a Roland RT30 HR or a D-Drum Chroma Lead. So as far as using these with electronic drums, it's definitely doable. Just be aware of the things that I mentioned. Just make sure you buy the appropriate gear or use the appropriate triggers if you wanna turn these electronic. For me, I still prefer using three ply mesh heads if I'm building a drum set from the ground up to be electronic. But if you're buying this mostly to use it as a low volume drum set and you wanna occasionally use like clip on triggers, I see no reason not to use these. By the way, I always let you guys know where I get the gear that I'm reviewing. In this case, it was Evans giving them to me for free for making this video, but they did not pay me to say nice things about it. As you can tell from this review, it was an actual legit review with pros and cons and what I liked and didn't like about it. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you all in a few.